Hi folks, so just a quick whiz through the colours before I start and we've got Ultramarine, Lemon and Cad Yellow mixed together, Payne's Grey, Lizard and Crimson, Raw Sienna and Umber. Light red, it's £130 Fabriano cold press. And I'm using a large Ron Ranson hake and this is just a little bit of water. And then what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to whack a bit of colour down first, just to try and create some sort of atmosphere straight away. So you've got the misty bit of light in the centre, a bit of a lizard and a bit of blue again. I'm just going to play with that and continue. That just gives me a nice background to work with, using those same colours again, but with plenty of blue in there. I'm starting up here. Down to about there. We're sort of down there like that. And then up on the other side. Something like that. A little bit stronger. Strong, just to contrast against the back, what's there at the back. Just leave a few little bits on painted paper just to add little bits of interest. And then I'm considering, I've just bought a pack of paper, but I'm considering getting some slightly heavier stuff the first time in quite some time. This is £130. I might go up to 140 and then just see what it gets in there. Possibly go even heavier, I don't know. Um, just a little bit of texture in the in the mountains. I'm just keeping it fairly subtle. I'm going to clean the brush because I'm going to another layer now. I'm going into the sort of what I'm thinking of is the middle ground. And with that, I'm going raw sienna, lemon yellow. Let's push it up into the mains, in, into the foothills. I'm sort of down here somewhere. It continues along there like that. And then we're up, up in that side area. I want this to be dark because I'm going to scrape a few little buildings in there. So it needs to be. I'll tell you what I've forgotten to do straight away. I've got to the reflections of the mountains in the water below. I'll come back. I'll have to do that later. For now, let's just bring this down here. Something like that. You know what, I'm going to, I might do it, I'm thinking to do it now actually, I'll just soak that up down the bottom, give that a quick dry. That's frustrating, so I've got to mix the same colours now, but not to worry. It's so much easier when you've already got that colour on your brush. And they're quite subtle as well, the reflections, so I don't, they don't need to be that much. But I just want something to be there just to. That'll do, that's all I need.
bit of burnt umber coming into it now. Now I'm not sticking religiously to the reference, I never do. But I always try and do whatever I think helps the main composition. And this one I'm giving with a, a sweep. into the foreground, something like that. Quite soft because the paper's still wet. But this is just like a sort of first layer, really. Right, now I'm switching to the little brush now. The little brush while I do a little bit of faffing. So I'm going to start off with a bit more, a bit more yellow. Just let's make that a bit more intense around there. Blue in there as well, dark and shadows and things. And let's come down there, up there like that. And darken that and get these buildings in. So what I might do is just turn this around. So if I'm looking at the reference now, I'm not looking at each individual building, I'm just going to pop a few sort of, pop them sort of in on mass type of thing. Um, so we've got a, something like that. Um, just a few sort of scattered here in there. In fact what I might do is, there is like a road coming around there like that, if I just suggest that like little road there. A few more little buildings there and there. We've also got that's miles too thick. That's uh had a bit of a mess of that. Paint over that a little bit. Let's get the the sharp the sharp edge. And we've also got like a few little telegraph poles and wires and stuff. Put that for now, I think. Sticking with a little run ransom brush. Just a little bit more water in there. And you can see sort of around there, we've got a few little building um, trees. So I'm, I'm just going to flick up like that. Something like that. The odd trunk visible. Clean the brush back into some yellow. Let's just come down here with that yellow.
going to scrape a few little rocks in here as well while I've got the uh, To do left hand because I want the light on the on the right hand side. reflections down there. slightly over the top with the rocks but not to worry. There is in fact there's like another little path up there isn't it? going somewhere off, off over yonder. Let's grab a little number three rigger brush. Yeah, a little bit of dark and I'm just gonna pop in the odd little as well that we've got lying around. A few little things down here. Brush actually, this one's rubbish. Let's put that down there. Let's clean that brush, it's got very, very muddy, isn't it? I'm just going to introduce a little bit of red in this foreground. Actually, I don't know that was wise because I haven't used that anywhere else, it should have used crimson maybe. The odd pebble here and there, nothing, nothing major. Being very very light because I'm I am careful of. You know, I just want to do a few weeds and grasses and things. I'm just want to use this dark enough now to put this. I've done enough before I put the that big tree. In. Let's dry that. to the, the little flat brush now. 
and just thinking about a few little darks here and there. Um, I don't want to get too mad. Just wondering if there's enough contrast there. So that's enough darks now. Right, let's make sure this is dry. I'll take the hike, the large hike, and I'm just looking for a damp, clean edge. So just damp and clean, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use it like an eraser. And we're sort of going up like that, and then up, something like that. And if I do it again, and with each stroke, the tree's trunk should become more and more apparent. For that. Now I'm switching to the sword liner now and a dark mix and this is going to be the twigs and branches and all that stuff. So most of them sort of start up here like that, and that sort of there. And Got a few going over on this way as well. I'll just a little bit of texture to that trunk. There was sort of somewhere over there. Drop a hint. There is one just behind here as well.
I don't give a fuck about it anymore. Um, quick dry. Gonna do. Just gonna grab the little zero rigger. I just want to look at uh, just a couple of people just wandering off. I'm just going to sign this one now down here and call that one done. That's my that's my go at the, the April challenge. So let's stick a, a mount on that now. See see what it looks like. So there's our finished painting. There's the photograph I was using from the the April challenge. It's up in the sky and mountains. I think it was a bit of crimson raw sienna. Just all the way down really, just leave a little bit of light down the centre and then push in a little bit of ultramarine and then just started shaping these mountains. You can see right at the, at the back I've just pushed them a very very light and you can see how they get stronger and stronger coming through into the foreground. A little bit of texture on these ones and then as we come further closer still put this tree line in there, put that in a little bit dark, try and get some sort of contrast. Maybe if that was a little bit darker, just to contrast against this white sort of misty section, might look better. Um, Going a little bit dark down the foothills while I scraped out some little buildings here and there on mass, little telegraph pole. And then a quick scrape just to suggest like a road or a path or something going off into the distance. A bit more lemon yellow down to the water's edge here, this water in the foreground. And then put it in dark along the banks and then Probably went slightly overboard with the rocks, couldn't resist them. And a few more rocks that are on this left hand side bank. And then just put a hint of some reflections of those mountains down in the in the water area as well. Because I'm just using this as a rough guide really, I'm not going to stick to it re re religiously. Then we've got this four grain tree, so just used a clean dry brush to take out the main trunk and then just added with a sword line a few branches here and there and then a couple of people although that could look a bit better walking off towards the valley so that's my entry for the April watercolor challenge um, to be honest I think I've seen better <laughs> I've seen better on the on the in the community page but we all learn. Um, so, as always, many thanks for your support. It is very much appreciated. Um, long may it continue, fingers crossed. Um, if you've got any questions, please ask. Keep practicing. Um, I will. It is time now to set the the May challenge, so I'll get onto that straight away. Um, until next time, happy painting. <laughs>